Good morning. Welcome to Sunset Hills United Presbyterian Church on this March 29th, 2020. It is a joy to have you here worshiping with us from your homes as I am here worshiping with you from the courtroom at Sunset Hills Church. Friends, as we gather today, we gather on a pretty gloomy day in the tri-state area. We've got thunderstorms and rain and all of those wonderful signs of spring. But even in the gloom, even in the gray, we remember that we are surrounded by the light, the light of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And so we begin our time of worship by lighting the Christ candle. Friends, announcements for the benefit of the body of Christ this day. First, I have heard your feedback that the videos from the church aren't quite as loud as they should be. Thank you to everyone who has informed me of that. I want you to know that that is part of the reason why we are in the courtroom today is for sound purposes. And also I've ordered some um, equipment, some audio equipment to help us with the audio problem. Of course, with everything that's going on in our world, it's going to take ages for that equipment to get here, but it is ordered and we are working on it. Thank you for your feedback. Other announcements, the new church website, shopchurch.org is up and running. A big thank you to the communications team and to our church office for getting that all situated. Check it out, shopchurch.org. Also, our worship services will be held online through Sunday, April 12th. And so be sure to come back here next Sunday um, online for worship. Food pantry donations are continued to be uh, collected at the back door of the church. There is a bin that you can put food pantry donations in. Also, contact the church office. We are collecting masks, those N95 masks for local medical units. And so you can call Karen Shine to bring those masks in if you have any in your garage or in your basement. The Easter prayer vigil will still take place on Saturday, April 11th from our homes. You can find on our website more information about that. And next Sunday is Palm Sunday. For Palm Sunday, what I would like you to do is to video your family, your household saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Take that video and mail it to me. You can mail it to me via um, your smartphone or online via email. Send it to me and next Sunday, my hope is to create a video for our church family so that we might see one another and hear one another as we celebrate Palm Sunday. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. Let us pray together our prayer of preparation. And now friends, you can find in the email that we received from Karen Shine, our bulletin for this Sunday. And so let us pray. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would come and be amongst us, that you would be in our time of worship, that we may honor and glorify and praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, please join with me in our call to worship as found printed in our bulletin. The whole top half of the world is shaking off its winter death. But death is the necessary somber note in the song of spring. Hand in hand with life, this is the season of light and shadow and why it takes our breath away. Let us worship the God of light, the God of life. Let us prepare for hearing God's word by praying together the prayer of confession as found printed in this morning's bulletin. Triune Lord, if you held our sin against us, who could live? 
who could stand. We seem to have more faith in death than hope in your promise of life. We seek peace through war. We find security in weapons. We abandon the hungry, the sick, and the dying. We pursue wealth by making others poor. And even so, you love us. Still, there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, we worship you. For you alone, O Lord, can save us from death. And now let us have a time of silent, private, and personal confession. In Christ we pray. Amen. Oh, beloved in Christ, if the Holy Spirit dwells in you, then God, who raised Jesus from the dead, will also give life to your mortal bodies. Friends, this is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our reading this day departs from the lectionary, which I very rarely do, but we're going for it this Sunday. We are departing from the lectionary and we are going to Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. Philippians is one of my favorite, favorite books of the Bible because it is written by Paul when he is in prison. And yet for Paul, it is the most joyful of his letters. And if you don't know Paul, Paul's a pretty cranky fella. I mean, he just, let's be real here. He's cranky. Cranky people are allowed in God's house too. And so he's usually pretty cranky. And then you get this letter that he writes from prison of all places. And it's just overflowing with joy. And so I, I love this letter. And we are reading today from Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 through 11. And if you need to go get your Bibles at home, if you do not have a bulletin handy, go ahead and pause this video. I will not be offended. And go get your Bibles and open up to Philippians chapter 2. We are beginning at verse 1. Hear these words from Paul as he writes to the church in Philippi. So, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any incentive of love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfishness or conceit, but in humility count others better than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this day and indeed every day, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
we who know our history, well, we know that food is scarce at the Auschwitz concentration camp. It's the early 1940s, as we all know, and every parent within the camp is hoarding food, hoarding food for the sake of their little ones, the ones in their care. Well, it is with surprise that one of these parents, a dad, begins hoarding margarine. His son assumes, well, yeah, dad's probably hoarding the margarine for us to eat. But when Hanukkah arrives, the boy is surprised to learn that the margarine isn't to be used for food at all. It's used as fuel. Fuel for the holiday of light. Why, he asks, why, Dad? Why are you doing this? We need food. And his father responds, buddy, we know that you can live for three weeks without food. But without hope, you cannot live possibly for three minutes. Hope. Hope is what carries Paul through his imprisonment as he writes to the Philippians this day. We can tell from earlier in this letter, if we had read chapter one from this preceding chapter, that the church in Philippi is worried about Paul. They are worried. And we know this because in the first chapter of Philippians, it's one of the only times that Paul talks about himself. Normally, he is all theology. But in the first chapter of Philippians, he talks about himself because the church is concerned. They are concerned about him. It's the same way that we are concerned when we hear that a beloved church member is in the hospital, has been added to the prayer list. I know because you all, you call me, you call Karen and the other Karen to find out what happened. What hospital are they in? What's the prognosis? What's going on? Has anyone from the church been to see them? You worry, don't you? Of course you do. And the church in Philippi is worried about Paul. They want an update this Sunday morning, gosh darn it. They want to know, how is he doing? What is the prison like? Is the church around him providing? Is he getting food? Is he in okay health? Will he have a trial? They want to know all the things. And you know what Paul gives them? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> he totally disappoints them by giving them no practical point of view on how he's faring. No, all Paul gives them is hope. Hope, if you read Philippians 1. That hope which continues into Philippians 2. Because without hope, well, it is not possible to live properly for three minutes. So what's Paul's hope in? What is Paul's hope in? But in the hope of Jesus Christ. We who have known Jesus, we who have worshipped Jesus, also know about this hope. We know that Paul is right. Whether we are in prison or in pain or in grief, or in financial difficulty, or in quarantine, or in social distancing, in over our heads, in a place where the creek may rise, we have hope, hope, Jesus the Christ. My colleague, the Reverend Mike Haddix and I he is the husband of the Reverend Jennifer Haddix. I go way back with both Mike and Jennifer. Well, he is a pastor serving in Jerome, Idaho. 
he and Jen have one of the most joyful Facebook accounts. You will never find anything depressing or political or, or really miserable on their Facebook, but particularly on Mike's. Mike has this Facebook account that just emanates with, with joy. And one of the greatest joys of his Facebook account is watching as his two sons that are roughly under the age of seven at this point, watching as these sons grow. Mike shares these spectacular reflections as he talks about reading The Hobbit to his son, as he talks about their love for Frosty the Snowman, as he, as he talks about their learning to ride bikes. And Michael, as he reflects on this journey with his two little boys, he talks about parenting with wise, wise advice that I'm sure comes in tandem with his wife because they are both wise, joyful people. And as Michael talks about parenting, he often talks about the advice his mother gave him when he had his first child. He writes, don't hold on to your children like this. For just like sand, if you clutch your children or anyone or anything in this life in a fist, however tempting it may be to do so, well, just like sand, what will happen to them? You'll lose them. Hold your children like this. Hold your children. Hold everyone. Hold everything in your life loosely as you would sand. For your children, those you love, everything in your life, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Jesus. Entrust everything to Jesus. In all areas of life, from raising children to coping with social distancing, Jesus is the only hope. In a world, Lord willing, where the creek does rise sometimes, where grief does happen, where fear happens, where hard stuff happens, where illness happens. Jesus, Jesus is our hope and we can trust him with everything in our life. It all belongs to him anyway. And so friends, the question this day is what is the hope of Jesus? Here is your reminder, beloved, for I know most all of you know this, but we need the reminder, don't we? First, the first hope of Jesus is the hope of a world where there will be no more tears, no more crying, no more grief, no more pain, no more corona. That is the world that, that we look forward to that Paul looks forward to with the return of the risen Jesus Christ on the final day. That is what we as Christians are ultimately looking forward to, the new heavens and the new earth when Christ returns and all of this tragic, messy, awful stuff is no more. The hope of Jesus is first, the hope of a world where Misery, loneliness, anxiety, illness, pain, tragedy is gone. Second, again, a reminder, beloved, the hope of Jesus is that we can participate in Jesus' work here and now of bringing his kingdom into fruition. We can participate in the kingdom of the Lord. We get to participate in the work of Jesus creating on earth as it is in heaven. How about that? You know this, but I think we can use the reminder. 
Paul sees this possibility of participating in the work of Jesus in his ministry to the Philippians. He sees how the Philippians love one another, how they are gracious toward one another, how they are merciful toward one another, how they provide for one another, how they take the time to know one another another. He sees glimpses of heaven on earth in these people. And he invites the church around the world. He invites the church of all time and all place to do the same. You, friends, are the church doing the kingdom work on earth as it is in heaven. You are doing, you may not have thought of this, but you are doing kingdom work when you are patient with those that you are social distancing with, with those that you're stuck in your house with. When you are polite to these people, when you use please and thank you, when you serve them, when you do their laundry, when you help clear the table, when you hold your temper with them, that's kingdom work. You are doing Jesus' work. When you make a run to the grocery store, offering to pick up groceries for your elderly and immunocompromised neighbors along the way, you, you are doing the work of the Lord. When you call those who live alone, just to make sure that they are okay and to make sure that they hear a human voice today, so that they know someone's thinking of them. You are doing holy work, holy work when you stay home. When you make the sacrifice of being away from those you love, your grandparents, your grandchildren, your parents. When you make the decision to stay away from the community that you enjoy. When you stay in, for the sake of those who have no choice but to go out, you are doing holy work. Because of Jesus Christ dwelling within us, dwelling within this world, you get to be a hope to others. And others, thanks be to God, get to be a hope to you. The second hope of Jesus beyond the hope of his return, is the hope that we can be to each other this day. There is no need to go without hope, friends, for hope is everywhere and hope abounds. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's children said, Amen. And now, beloved in Christ, if you take out your bulletin for this day, we are going to declare what we believe. We're taking a little break from the brief statement of faith to utilize the Apostles' Creed. Pardon me. Let us read together, declaring what we believe the Apostles' Creed is found printed in the bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come before the Lord in prayer this day, we continue to lift up in prayer those on our prayer list, which you can find in the announcements. We lift up in prayer those in need of healing, and we lift up in prayer those who are grieving. And friends, we lift up in prayer all of those whose jobs require them to leave the house at this point. We lift up in prayer particularly 
those who are putting their own health in danger by going to work. Friends, we give thanks, endless thanks, for those who are being brave to make sure that our world is still able to function in this time. We ask that if any of you have prayer concerns, that you please contact the church office. If you become sick yourself, whether of body, mind, or spirit, please call the church so that we may call you and pray with you. If you um, have been diagnosed with COVID-19, then we ask that you do let the church know, both so that we may pray for you and so that we may be aware of what is happening in our church family. And friends, if you have a material need, food or the like, please, again, give us a call so that we can be there for you, so that we can be the body of Christ, brothers and sisters in Jesus, taking care of one another in this time. Friends, God is good. God hears our prayers. Let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Holy and wondrous Lord, we give you thanks for this day that you have made. We give you thanks for the rain as it refreshes the earth and reminds us of the coming of spring. God, we give you thanks that even as our world is hurting, that we see how your world presses on, how there is resurrection and new life with every daffodil that opens, with every robin that sings, with every dogwood tree, with every magnolia tree, we are reminded that difficult times, that death, that pain, that illness never has the final word. For God, you are the God who wins the day, and for that we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the hope that we have in the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for the hope that we have in our relationships, our families, our church families, and our friendships. And God, we give you thanks for all of those who are continuing to work for the sake of your world. We give you thanks for all of those in the medical profession, for all of those who are keeping us safe, for all of those who are collecting our garbage, for all of those who are delivering our mail and our packages, for all of those who are serving with the physically and the mentally handicapped, for all of those who have become teachers to their children who are homeschooling unexpectedly at this time, for all of those who are working in our necessary life-giving businesses at the grocery stores, at the auto repair shops. God, there are so many whom I am sure I have not named, but whom you see. And God, we give you thanks. Even as we have so much to be thankful for this day, Lord, we pray prayers of intercession for God. We are afraid. We do not know what tomorrow will bring. For goodness sakes, dear God, we don't know what this afternoon will bring. But God, you are already there. You are there in the future. You are there preparing a way for us. God, we are vulnerable as we tell you that we are afraid of what may happen, of who may come down with this virus of what going to the hospital might look like in this time. There is so much anxiety surrounding the unknown. Lord, be with us. Grant us your peace that passes understanding. We pray this day for all of those who are anxious in this time. We pray this day for our leaders, those who are leading our county, our immediate community, who are leading our Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, who are leading this nation, who are leading this world through a time of pandemic. We bring them before you, O oh God. We pray this day for those who are unwell, that has nothing to do 
with this pandemic, those who are experiencing illness, O oh God. Watch over them and grant them your peace and your health. Be with their families, granting them hope and courage as they care for their loved ones. We pray this day for those who are grieving, praying, O oh God, that you would wrap your loving arms around them and remind them of the hope of the promise of the resurrection. We lift up to you our mission co-workers at the border of U.S.-Mexico. And God, we pray for all of those who are impacted by all of the new regulations that are put in place by our government at the borders, who are impacted, dear Lord, watch over them. And God, we pray for our sister church in Lichenza, Malawi. Bless them, O oh God. Keep them safe. And Lord, we pray for their worship as they seek to glorify and honor you. Now, finally, O oh Lord, we pray for our world vision child, praying for young Pabazzo in South Africa. Watch over her and her community, dear Lord, and keep them safe. We pray for our own community, for those who are in need of food, of care, who are in need of a friend. God, help us to be hopeful, to be the hope that they need, to care for one another, to be a helper, especially in this time. God, guide all that we think, all that we say, all that we do, that in thought, word, and deed, we may be blessed to glorify you. We pray this all in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In response to the word, we are invited to give. We give of our time serving the church, serving God's people, both within the church and outside the church. We give of our talents, giving of those, those things that we are gifted in. And we give of our treasure. Friends, you are invited to continue to please send in your tithe via check, or if you go to shopchurch.org, you will find directions on how to give online through our Tithely app, shopchurch.org. Friends, let us be sure to continue in our giving to the God who has been giving to us. Friends, as we depart to go out into the world, by which I mean going out into our homes, let us go forth ready to be a hope to one another, filled with the hope of Jesus Christ, the hope that has never failed, the hope that is watching over us, that is with us this day and always. And now I would invite you to rise as able to receive this blessing. From the book of Numbers. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.